So, uh, thank you, Honorable Deputy Chairman and uh, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, and the leaders of my party, BJP, for giving me this opportunity. And I rise to speak in support of the bill, sir. Sir, the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022, which was introduced in Lok Sabha on 3rd August 22 and passed in the same House on 8th August 22, is to amend the Energy Conservation Act 2001 and to empower the central government to, spe to specify a carbon credit, credit trading scheme the bill also aims to reduce carbon emissions and to address the climate change and find out non-fossil energy sources to meet the requirements. Sir, the bill also seeks to provide regulatory frameworks for number one, carbon trading in India, number two, encouragement of penetration of renewable in energy mix, number three, effective implementation and the enforcement of Energy Conservation Act, sir. Sir, energy conservation means reduce the consumption of energy or limited the use. It means use of fewer energy services or use devices to require less energy, thus promoting conservation of energy. Air pollution due to burning of fossil fuel causes several harmful diseases in human and animals. Using less energy or conserving energy reduces living expenses and uh, protects the environment from excess use and carbon dioxide emissions. Sir, Sir India has already announced at COP26 26 conference of parties at Glasgow 2021 the following main points. Point number one, 500 gigawatts of electricity from non fossil fuels by 2030. Point number two, reduction of carbon emission by additional 1 billion tons and reducing carbon intensity economy less than 45 percent. Number three, net zero emission by 2070. Third, this clearly shows India's sincere determination to work for low carbon emission in combating the climate change and also endeavoring the endeavoring to achieve sustainable development goals, sir. Sir, India's sincere effort of NDC, nationally determined contribution, has made changes in climate action much before 2030. Sir, India is the only G20 nation to be in line with 2 degrees centigrade warming because of its climate action the per capita energy consumption of India is one third of the world average, whereas carbon emission is 1.9 ton of CO2 in 2019, compared with 15.5 tons for the US and 12.5 tons for Russia. That year, despite India being the home of one sixth of global population, globally, India stands for in renewable energy power capacity and fought in wind power and also fought in solar power capacity, having one of the highest growth rates for renewable energy in the world. According to Global Trends in Renewable Energy Investment 2020 reports, India attracted an investment of US dollar 64.2 billion in our currency, rupees 4.7 lakh crores during 2014 and 2019. Sir. Amidst growing energy needs and the changing global climate scenario, the Government of India is trying to enhance the capacity of renewable energy by proposing amendments to Energy Conservation Act 2001. The, object, the objective is to enhance demand for renewable energy for sectors such as industries, buildings and transport, etc. The Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022 is very much necessary to meet the additional energy requirements for sustainable development as well as a green economy to attain India's motto, leave no one behind. The government of India is trying to work collaboratively with domestic and global stakeholders in the energy sector for a sustainable non-fossil energy generation, sir. Sir, in the conclusion, 
many countries in the world are making amendments and changes in the energy sector, not to affect the climate change, giving focus on clean energy and energy conservation. India's progress is very impressive and making nationally determined contributions as announced at COP26 at Glasgow 2021. The Energy Conservation Act enacted in 2001 and which was amended in 2010 is necessary to make amendments again due to emergence of new factors. Sub so factor number one, to promote new and renewable energy sources. Factor number two, development of a domestic carbon market, sir. So justification of amendment is, sir, the amendments include such as carbon trading and minimum share of non-fossil consumption as well as keeping the country with sustainable development and keeping country's commitment related to climate change. The energy efficiency will be broadened into energy transition, giving focus on the reducing of carbon footprints of our economy. However, the bills will support the industries to grow in a sustainable manner. The proposed amendment shall promote use of non-fossil energy sources, including green hydrogen, green ammonia, and making penalties for offenders more effective. Sir, there are also many major amendments in this bill. Number one, legal framework to mandate use of non-fossil sources, including green hydrogen, for energy and the fit stock. To reduce carbon emission of Indian economy, we have to use non-fossil energy sources and feed stocks like green hydrogen, green ammonia, biomass and ethanol, etc. And point number two, framework for carbon markets. Climate change has become the most important sector of India ecosystem. Carbon emission from fossil fuels or greenhouse gas emission is responsible for global warming. Nowadays, carbon markets are playing a very important role in the reduction of carbon emission and the carbon trading can be applied to the private sector also. Sir, number three, measure amendment, bringing large residential buildings within the fall of the energy conservation regime. Residential buildings consume about 24% of total electricity in India and this sector is poised for an exceptional growth during the next two decades with an estimated addition of about 3 billion square meter by 2030. The proposal includes expanding the scope of building to include large residential building with connected load more than 100 kilowatts or 120 kVA. And so increasing the scope of energy conservation building code, the idea of life, lifestyle for environment movement which was introduced by our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modiji during the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference, uh, COP26 at Glasgow 2021. The idea promotes an environment conscious lifestyle that focus on mindful and deliberate utilization instead of mindless and destructive con consumption. The scope of energy conservation buildings called ECBC is proposed to be widened to include renewable energy and sustainable building concepts and to be renamed as Energy Conservation and Sustainable Building Code, ECSBC, which will be implemented through building by laws of respective state governments. So, measure amendment number five, amendments in penalty provision to make the enforcement more effective, penalty provisions are being differentiated based on the area of implementation sector, namely appliance, industries, and vehicles, etc. At the same time, penalty provisions <coughs> effective. Large number of citizens are proposed to be rationalized under the objectives of enhancing ease of doing business and ease of living. Penalties regarding non-compliance with the ECSBC are being deleted, and this will be administered through provisions of building by laws. Similarly, under Section 14, Clause C, the words, sales, or process of appliance are deleted, thereby keeping the, account the accountability for prohibition and inefficient appliance limited to only manufacturer and importer. This will avoid undue harassment to the retailer, dealers, and the consumers, etc. Sir, my last point is, uh, 
In, uh, other amendments, uh, number one, inclusion of various ministries in governing council of Bureau of Energy Efficiency, BEE, for better functioning of BEE. And number two, power to state electricity regulatory commission to have smooth enforcement process are included. Sir, with this few words, I conclude my speech and I wholeheartedly support the bill and request all the honorable members to support the bill to be passed. Thank you, sir.